nostalgia, excitement, bright lights, and special guests. A memorable event. Good evening, this is Frank Opachewski, along with Jim Cassidy and Pat Dugan. We will be bringing you all the action this evening. Nostalgia, 62 years, many names, and many dreams fulfilled. Excitement, anticipation of the mission bout. The finest in amateur boxing. Bright light, the new Aquinas Gymnasium. And most of all, our special guest, Muhammad Ali. The greatest, the boxing legend. The most recognized man in America. A true humanitarian. But most of all, we will be bringing you the 62nd annual mission bouts from Aquinas Institute in Rochester, New York. Jim, the mission bouts, how can you describe it? Well, the mission bouts is probably the premier high school boxing program in the country. In fact, there's, I believe there's only one other school in the nation that has a boxing program, but Aquinas definitely has the longest running, and the cause is just the greatest. I mean, all the money, the proceeds that are generated here go to aid the missions, and that's where the title came from. But there's 62 years of tremendous tradition here. Graduates of this program, this boxing program, and this magnificent school, Aquinas, have gone on to become Supreme Court justices, politicians, lawyers, doctors, and you're talking about perhaps the premier high school in the whole nation. So it's a thrilling night here for amateur boxing and for Aquinas with this brand new stadium, brand new gymnasium. Jim, with uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, the action is, uh, and the people are waiting with anticipation. Well, I'll tell you, Frank, this is one of the greatest nights ever for Aquinas because of Muhammad being here. You mentioned a few minutes ago that he was maybe the most popular person in the country. Muhammad Ali is the most recognizable face in the world, you know? And this being a Catholic boys' school, you know, usually that honor goes to the Pope. But, but right now, tonight, and for every night, really, Muhammad Ali is the most recognized face in the world. It's a, a great, great night here for this school and, and for this city. Jim, we're all looking for great anticipation, but we'll be right back with action right after this short pause. Hey, Frank. the greatest. I will be the youngest heavyweight champion in history. And the only reason I won't be is because this fella, Sonny Liston, would be ducking and dodging me.
gonna come out smoking, and I ain't gonna be joking. I'll be pecking and a poking, pouring water on his smoking. Then this might shock and amaze you, but I will destroy Joe Frazier. <laughs> tell you about my strategy. I'll tell my trainer. Tell you, Bodini, come here. Bodini, tell him, what are we going to do? You're going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Ah, ah. rumble, young man, rumble. Ah, that's what we're going to do. You heard it. That's my trainer. He'll tell you. Dugan, the Aquinas Mission Bouts historian, is uh, going to give us some brief history of how the Mission Bouts started. Frank, Pat? You make me old. We, well, would, we wouldn't you. do that, Pat, but... Nin uh, 1932, it seems like two of the young men here at Aquinas uh, 
had a little grudge between themselves, and instead of going out on the sidewalk, uh, the principal thought that it would be a good idea to uh, set up the ring and have the boys duke it out. And that was the first mission bout, 1932, between two young gentlemen. We've had some great people like the mission bouts here. Uh, Judge Don Marks, who we all know, uh, was the champion here at the mission bouts before going into the Marine Corps and fighting at Iwo Jima, where he uh, became a uh, hero there. But, uh, sorry, you him in we know that when, through uh, the years, the mission bouts has contributed in, right? many, many okay. dollars uh, to the Brazilian uh, Father's uh, Mission okay. in Guatemala and in Mexico. And we continue that tradition tonight with the 62nd Mission Bounce. <laughs> you've had some of the uh, families that have been involved here uh, uh, have been as much as just, two and three and four or children this, uh, think, um, that have gone through, and each of them is coordinating the ring developed in the boxing program itself. Well, we look at uh, the Bell Brothers. Uh, many of the original Bell Brothers, their sons have now boxed in the Mission Bouts and are looking forward to seeing their grandsons box here. The Enrights, the same thing, that the Enrights keep coming back. Their sons came back. Uh, Tom and his brothers are quite active here at Aquinas, as are the Bell Brothers. And we see that constantly, where the families and the, and the sons have come back to, uh, to fight again. Pat, uh, they, uh, the boys go into extensive training here, uh, approximately the first part of the year, and then uh, it's... Uh, they go on and they get into actual uh, competition. It is, it is a winter uh, program. We'll go to the national anthem, Frank, and then we'll get into that. First bout will be coming up shortly, Pat, uh, uh, and we will get into more uh, of the uh, history of the mission bouts. Uh, but first, Jim, uh, on the rules of amateur boxing, uh, can you describe uh, to our audience uh, what the referee's uh, main focus is here uh, as far as the program is concerned, I mean, amateur boxing, and, and how the judges come into play? Well, these judges today are, are USABF judges. That's the United States Amateur Boxing Federation. They're the, they're the premier sanctioned officials in the United States for amateur boxing. The referee's role is basically to, to make sure that the fighters adhere to the rules and to um, separate the fighters and any kind of clinches that take place and make sure that fair play is incorporated. And as you see right now, this referee right here has sent both guys back to the corners. Now he's talking to the judges and he's telling them, I'm all set to start the match. They're acknowledging back. And as soon as that happens, you hear the bell and now we're into the, into the match. And notice also how the referee is 
stays his distance. He lets the fighters stay in on each other, and he basically stays to the outside and only comes in when he needs to uh, for a clinch or something. As far as the judges, they're looking for um, they're looking for scoring points. And if you noticed on the on the gloves right here, well, not these particular gloves, but some gloves in amateur boxing have right where the fist is. It's uh, a color in which the officials can spot where the punch is landing. And what they do is they basically add the accumulation of blows and then um, based on that, 20 points is given to the winner, 19 or less to the loser of the round. In our first match, in our first match, uh, Tony uh, Castandrenas uh, is a freshman at Aquinas, 15 years old, weighs 115 pounds, and his opponent uh, in the white uh, is Mike McPherson. He's also a freshman, 15 years old, weighing 116 pounds. Uh, but very little uh, reach advantage. 66 uh, for McPherson and 65 inches for uh, Cassandrinas. Very little boxing experience, but they. Uh, well, these two guys are freshmen, and this is probably the first time that they've uh, ever been before a crowd like this. You know, and, and to come out here in their first really sanctioned amateur fight being freshmen and perform in front of a crowd like this and with Muhammad Ali in the, in the presence, you know, it's, it's a great emotional thrill. Well, uh, you know, it's, uh, as far as his coach's con evaluation is concerned, Mike is progressing well and he's uh, developed a good left cross. He just needs a little work and uh, I'm sure uh, in the future he will uh, do very well in the mission bouts. A lot of the guys that come up through this program that start out as freshmen go on to become um, uh, four-year fighters and uh, go through the whole program. And, and, uh, that's yeah, that's part of the thing. The other interesting thing is, Jim, is that uh, these fellows, although they're boxing up here, they don't dislike each other. They're all good friends in this boxing program. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good... Uh, camaraderie that is formed by all the boxers and, and Dom Arioli, uh, the coach, gets these fellas in December and starts to work with them and uh, all for, for this on a March night at the new Aquinas Gymnasium. A March night that's always cold it seems every year after year but I'll tell you they always have a tremendous crowd. Some comments in, from some of the mission bout, uh, former mission bout fighters were that, uh, you know, it was nice to fight uh, in the ring, but the next day they were shooting baskets uh, together. So it, uh, yeah. it's really a friendly affair, just as the, uh, the mission bout started. Uh, I think the purpose was to, uh, to show that uh, two people could get in the ring, settle their issue, and come back the next day as friends. On, we're in round two. It's Tony Cassandreas in the red and Mike McPherson in the white. Mike got pulled down with that referee ruled that it was wasn't a knockdown, it was more of a tip. Oh, Mike answered a good left hook. And by McPherson there. Tony's stepping right in. See how he's cutting his distance down there? Great, great. Now the first round jitters are over and these guys are these guys are ready to get down to some business here. Well, some comments from his uh, coach uh, that uh, Tony was going to put constant pressure on his opponent, so, uh, and he's been doing that so far. He's been doing that, and, um, and right now, right now Mike's been uh, coming back in this round a little bit. Another thing that happens right here is you notice the guys grabbing their headgear sometimes, and that's because it, uh, they're not used to it and it does become loose. And, well, we're going to ask you both uh, to judge uh, each round and uh, see how close you come to the uh, actual judging of the, the bout. So far, how do you see it, Jim, as far as the first round was concerned? Well, I, you know, I think that uh, at this time, Tony's got a slight lead, but um, these are three three round bouts here, and I've seen these things turn around. I've seen a guy have control of the first part of a fight, and all of a sudden, the other guy come back and make me look like a fool on my call. <laughs> it's always tough to, to think like the judges think. Because you're, you've right. been in the boxing game a little longer, Jim, but I have to agree with you that I thought Tony took that first round. Well, a lot of times you see the uh, in the Olympics uh, where the, uh, the bout's over and uh, 
it appears on the surface that uh, you know one individual uh, did an excellent job and he's a loser yeah often it comes because of um, the boxers are coming from all over the world and different geographical areas have different styles and when you get a judge there he sees a certain style and that's more attractive to him but um, basically it should come down to the in amateur boxing that it's the accumulation of punches which is the ultimate judge on everything both fighters uh, have commented that uh, the program has given them uh, a good reason to stay in shape for other sports. Well, I'll tell you, after three rounds of this up here, they'll also see the value of, of staying in good shape because these gloves right here are getting pretty heavy on these two guys right now. You know, I'm sure they feel like they got 25 pounds on their arms with these these gloves, but. Three rounds it's of boxing is like a, a whole football game. It sure is. Pat, you'd like to go in there right now and, uh, and handle three rounds? Well, I don't think I could maybe handle a, a half a round right now. <laughs> <laughs> Time changes a lot of things. Well, a third round coming up here. Both boys uh, know it's very important. Oh boy, you had received uh, instructions from Mike your corner, man. Yeah. Uh, See, now Mike's a little more relaxed, and he's he's ready to take the offensive a little bit. That's Mike McPherson in the white, and Tony Castandrinas in the uh, red. Time is the great equalizer in these things. Let's go by and all of a sudden, these guys get real competitive. The referee uh, only uses a, uh, a, a, a few comments in the ring. Uh, how do these uh, really relate? Uh, well, he uses They're very sharp uh, statements. They're sharp commands, and the boxers are trained, and they rehearse listening to those commands so that they know exactly, you know, what what how to react to that command. Um, if they were to continue or not heed the referee's warnings, they could lose points or even be disqualified. So, and also, when you're talking about this level, a command is a welcome break sometimes. Well, for our first bout, we've seen some uh, real good action. Well, both these guys are now going to know the value of what it's like to, to get up here. And you watch how strong they are next year. By the looks of it, they're going to sleep well tonight, too. Oh, Jim. they will. See, Tony's hands came down. But, um, a good effort for first time out. Well, we'll wait for the decision, but uh, how do you see it, Jim? I think that... Uh, I got a history of blowing the first fight usually, but I, <laughs> I think I think that maybe Tony might get the edge on this fight because he had a real strong first round, and I thought the second round he might have had a slight edge. Third round though, Mike came back, and you never can tell on how these decisions are going to go. But I'm Pat, how'd you Tony. see it? Well, I think I have to agree with the, with Jim. I think that Tony that first round gave him a, quite an edge, and the second round was sort of about even. The third round, McPherson came out uh, really going at it, but then he sort of tired, and I think Tony took over. So I'd have to give uh, the third round an even round, but based on that first round, I think Tony uh, may get it. But then again, the judges know more about it than I do. Well, we're just kind of looking here if we can give uh, uh, our audience uh, our view of how it's taking place. If uh, if they're on the same level, they can be able to judge this as we go along. Well, not too bad for the first one. Tony's the winner and a good effort by Mike McPherson. Well, before our next uh, fight, uh, just like to make comment that the uh, 10th annual Aquinas Sports Celebrity Dinner is coming up uh, on Sunday, March 20th at the Rochester Hyatt Regency Hotel. There will be uh, four inductees into the Aquinas Hall of Fame. 
And the featured guest speaker is uh, a very, very funny man, uh, the president uh, of the uh, Utah Jazz, Frank Layton, former Niagara University coach. Uh, I'm sure that uh, a lot of you people out there have had an opportunity to uh, hear uh, Frank Layton, a very funny man. If you have an opportunity, call Aquinas, and I'm sure tickets are available for the 10th Annual Aquinas Sports Celebrity Dinner. Great affair, that sports celebrity dinner. They got some of the outstanding talents in the world of sports that always show up to that thing. It's a great, great event for not only the college, but uh, the, I'm sorry, the, the school, but also for the uh, city to have those people come in. And the history of Rochester. You might also remember as a former high school hockey coach. He's an Amherst Hall of Famer. He's a former coach of the Amherst. He is the former coach of the Boston Bruins. He is Don Cherry. And he's sitting right here. Take a short break and then take a couple seconds to say welcome back. Okay. We'll be right back with and more action right after the short pause. Six runaway champ, Tony. Choosing your high school is one of the most important decisions in your life. It will help determine who you are and what you are capable of accomplishing. Aquinas is a family of people committed to educating the total person. AQ combines superb academics and a dynamic social environment with a strong sense of Christian values. We feel that gives us the edge when we leave here and go out into the real world. In fact, Upon graduation, 90% of Aquinas students go on to higher education. Come and join us as we explore some of the reasons why Aquinas is an outstanding place to be. Back to more action of the Aquinas mission bouts. They were just introducing Don Cherry, the former coach of the uh, coach player of the Rochester Americans and the coach of the Boston Bruins. And now uh, you can see Don uh, on television weekly in Toronto uh, and throughout all of Ontario. Don Cherry is really a beloved uh, person here in Rochester sports. You know, he played with the great Amher hockey teams in the 60s. It had Red Armstrong, Stan Smirk, and um, Tex Eamon, Dick Gamble. He's a, he's a great, great um, part of Rochester. I had American an opportunity tradition. here uh, last year to watch uh, his program uh, in Canada. And uh, always got his little white dog with him. What is it, a bulldog? Uh, yeah. I, What's this dog named Blue or something? I, in our second bout of the evening, in the red corner, we're going to have Ted Jemikowski, a freshman, 15 years old, weighing in at 155 pounds. He is uh, five foot six inches. And in the white corner, Nick Dwyer, also a freshman, age 14, weighing in at 162 pounds, five foot eight inches. Both of them have one year of boxing experience. That's Nick Dwyer in the white and Todd Jemilkowski in the red corner. These boys mean business, Frank. They're going to come out and use it all in the first round. I noted that in the, in the program that Nick Dwyer's uh, favorite boxer is Muhammad Ali, so I'm sure that he wants to put on a good fight for Muhammad being here tonight. And Todd's favorite boxer is Evander Holyfield, so t Todd's, uh, you know, more in the current period. Well, right now, Nick's keeping the pressure on him and doing a good thing there, too. He stepped back in the center of the ring to try to Try to get Nick to come forward there. They're not afraid to let it fly. Both boys.
Floyds uh, are going all out in this first round. We'll see how much they have left in the third one. Nick's got a nice jab, popping that jab in there real nice for being a first year program guy. Probably his father's been working with him. Good counters there by Todd. It's a pretty good fight, first round. Somebody behind us yelled, go Nick, and he looked over and shouldn't do that. Yeah. Could be a run, you always, come from nowhere while you're not Always looking. gotta keep focused on the man in front of you. Got a mouthpiece out mouthpiece here. Mouthpiece out. They're wearing protective uh, equipment uh, around their uh, as headgear. This this program here is um, a program that's designed for protection of the students, and safety is the number one priority. And um, for the most part, a lot of these guys are well, most of these people, I should say, are are not going to go on to become. Um, real active amateur boxers or or even attempt to go into professional rings. Although there has been uh, there some has of been. the Michigan bout participants that have gone on to bigger and better things. Like one of the... Frank of the, uh, uh, Frank Gwelly, I believe it was, went on to Syracuse. Uh, Frank Gwelly, and, uh, and, is Frank Gwelly sitting right across from us, and um, Frank had a successful political career afterwards, and now is uh, manager over at um, Locust Hill Country Club. Uh, but even with this program right now, Kevin Farrell became a New York State amateur boxing champion. And, uh, and um, so some guys do go on. And we will see Kevin uh, in an exhibition uh, in our seventh uh, bout of the evening. And I know he's going to love doing that in front of Muhammad Ali. Well, I don't envy him. He's going up against Lizzie Sachs, 300 pounds. <laughs> Heck of a football tackle. Ooh, I got to see that. <laughs> a football tackle. And Kevin's got to go all of uh, 175, but... Uh, it'll be a... Round two. Todd Jomolkowski in the red corner and Nick Dwyer with the white uniform. They're going to start off just the way they ended. Good right by Nick. Excellent action for our second bout of the evening. Yep, there goes the mouthpiece again. We have 13 bouts uh, in total that we will be showing you. I had Nick on that uh, first round, Jim. I thought uh, his jab was giving him some points. I think Nick's got a nice jab, and I agree. I think it's, it's been a real big point uh, score for him. But I like Todd's heart. Todd really coming back. Pat, they, uh, after the 13 bouts, uh, they have a couple of awards. Uh, yeah, we hand out uh, various awards. They have the fight of the night, uh, the fighter of the night, and that can be a tie because uh, you'll, you'll see some good fighters there and it's sometimes a very hard decision. And also the freshman fighter of the night. Now we've had two freshmen fights so far, uh, but even if the freshman fights a, uh, somebody in his own weight class that may be a sophomore or a junior, he's still in contention for that. And we give out the uh, Al and Joe Schmitz Award for the most improved boxer. That goes to boxers with a little experience here and uh, in Don Mariola's mind that, that they've improved immensely. Then the Al Bracuto Award, Al was very active in the mission bounce for years. Uh, that's a, given to fighters based on their training schedule and how they uh, prepare themselves for the fight. And again, Don makes that decision, Dom and the trainer. Neither one of them seem, uh, be, seem to be dropping their gloves, so they're still pounding away in there. Well, there's a lot of emotion going on here with the fans. Oh, good, good right hand there. Round by, two. Good right hand thrown a nick at the bell. It's a good scrap so far. Both these guys are tired, but they still got a long, um, a long third round to go yet. See, Muhammad Ali is just, he's really engrossed in these fights. He's on the edge of his seat over there. That's the, th that's the great thing about Ali, though. He was always a great fan of the sport also. You know, 
There was a great article in the Times Union last night on Mohammed Ali, I thought, uh, that got into not only his boxing, but into his uh, mission, if you would call it that. He's on going to the different countries, trying to help in, in settling peace, been to South Africa, to China, Iran, and Iraq. And I think that's just great that somebody who is a human being, and, and he's really uh, not only the boxing champion of the world, but he is the champion of the world. Well, as I said before, Muhammad Ali is the most recognized face in the world. And when he goes into Asia or Africa or North America, South America, whatever, everyone knows him. He's still Ali. Round three here to... No knockdown. Pull him behind the head. And Todd was a little bit off balance there. But Dwyer's coming on strong here. It's going to be a good... Dwyer in the white. And Jamilkowski in the red. And we got a time delay here again while the mouthpiece is out. And here we are in the third round. These two are going at it like it was the first round. And show you what good condition they've kept themselves in. Todd with a big attack here. Trying to overwhelm Nick. Oh, the Ali shuffle. Did you see that? <laughs> his own Ali oh, shuffle. He lost the mouthpiece again. Oh, Mohammed's got his eyes out. Mohammed's wiping his brow. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> he saw that Ali shuffle, and I think it brought back memories of um, <laughs> him against Cleveland Williams. You can see the boys are tired because the way they're breathing through their mouth. I think that's why the mouthpiece is coming out more this round than it has previously. This has turned into a pretty close fight here, actually. But um, I think the biggest thing why it's even up so much is because Nick is not throwing the jab like he was. He's going all for the, the time running ball. out. In round three of our second bout of the evening. Here they come, one more time. Oh, big shot by, right by Nick. Big He's shot by Nicky. Todd's thinking about that one. A great fight between Nick Dwyer and Todd Jamokowski. This is definitely in there for the fight of the night, I think. Plus we got they one both more to go. They both put an awful lot of effort into this one. Well, this has got to be one of the candidates for freshman fight of the night. They haven't stopped throwing punches. Got another timeout here. It's tough buffer. when you're tired out like that to keep that mouth shut, you know. The points can be deducted after uh, after enough times with the mouthpiece is gone. The end of round three. And the fans really like it. Oh, yes. They're getting a standing ovation from a number of the fans. So how did you see it? Well, I think Nick Dwyer is going to get the decision here. He controlled the early part of the fight with his jab. He was landing the more crisper punches at the end, although, you know, Todd really came back after that rough first round. He really got himself back into the fight here, and I think it was just the cleaner punches in the third round that probably pulled the decision out for him. What about you, Pat? Pat? Yeah, I, I go along with that. I think Nick, that uh, first round with his jabs, I, th I think he had some good combination. He carried it right to the third round. I'm going to the area broadcasters who will announce the winner of this bout and the players for the next bout. Ladies and gentlemen, in the parlance of the fight game, that is known as a Pier 6 brawl. Two very tough kids give no quarter, ask no quarter, and in a very close decision. Don Fisher, former broadcaster in the Rochester area. An outstanding fight. Nick Dwyer declared the winner. Two for two, gentlemen. The greatest nights in the history of Rochester sports. 
Don Fisher thanking Don Arioli and Tony Licione for their efforts in bringing Muhammad Ali here. But now, the third bout of the evening, this will pick. Here we are waiting for the um, contestants to enter the ring. We have two more freshmen coming up in the third bout of the evening. How long are we waiting? You, you notice at the end of every bout, the fighters are giving, giving medals. Uh, the last medal was presented by uh, Father, Father Zoki, who was the principal here at Aquinas. Now I do go back to Clark Frank because I knew him when he was just done as Zoki and taught here as a, at Aquinas as a, a novitiate. See, we were trying to hide that, Pat. Initially, I called you a historian. So he's young. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> He taught, he taught my oldest son as a division. Introducing in the red corner, weighing 122 pounds, freshman Mike Reisinger. Now Mike Reisinger in the red corner, and Al Brocato Kudo in the uh, white corner. And I had an opportunity to talk to Mike Reisinger uh, during training, and Mike's going to kind of give you his views on what he's going to do this evening. Mike, uh, this is your first year in the boxing program. Can we look for a little Ali shuffle in your first match? Um, I think so. I got, I got a lot of speed. I got a lot of quickness in me. I think I can go all three rounds. Three rounds. What possessed you to get into the program in your first year? Um, probably my father. He got me into this. So I decided to go for him. Any specific punches we can look forward to seeing from you this evening? Probably a uh, right hook I got. It's pretty powerful. Well, and the way it's described, we can look for uh, about equal to Ali. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Great. Good luck. Thanks. Uh, in my interview with Mike, uh, you know, he sounded very aggressive, and uh, in his first year, he, he uh, claimed his favorite boxer was Mike Tyson, but uh, I think the interview describes uh, he's ready, and we'll see. Mike Reisinger in the red corner, and Al Brocuto, 15 years old, 120 pounds in the white corner. Well, Brocuto is a famous name here at Aquinas. You can say that again, Jim. His grandfather was a great supporter, helped Dom for years with training. Uh, his son fought here. Al's father fought here. So we should see a good boxing match. The Brigitte family is uh, a boxing family. Brokudo Reisinger in our third batch of the evening. Brokudo's in the redhead gear. I'm sorry, Brokudo's in the blue headgear, and Reisinger is in the red headgear. You hear the fans behind us, they have their favorite fighter and uh, yelling encouragement. That's the thing about um, a program like Aquinas here. You got mom and dad and aunts and uncles and grandma, grandpa. Well, there wasn't a Great ticket support. to be had, uh, so if you didn't get it early, you weren't coming. From what I understand, this thing sold out in a few hours. Beautiful gymnasium here, though. Beautiful gymnasium here at Aquinas Institute. Well, they've had an opportunity to put up all their banners of uh, their Section 5 champion uh, championships throughout the years. Uh, you can see it goes back uh, through the 80s. 79. Well, Aquinas, football. Has, Aquinas has one of the greatest traditions in high school, especially their football program. You know, years and years and years of nationally ranked uh, football programs. Tremendous, well, tremendous athletic school. I mentioned nostalgia, and nostalgia goes back years and years with the tradition of the mission bouts uh, with a football program that they had in the 40s and 50s. Uh, brought teams in, Boys Town, uh, Port Arthur, Texas, uh, and uh, various schools throughout uh, St. Benedict's. Uh, it was big time. Just being a student at Aquinas with that tradition is big time. Round one, how do you see it, Pat? 
Well, I thought it was an even round. I thought both both of the boys put up a good fight. I think they're both trained well. Do you see it the same way, Jim? Pretty close. We got two stylists here, you know, rather than two punchers like we had last fight. And um, so we're going to see a little more of the sweet science from these two guys, I think. Well, they both seem to have quick hands. It's uh, a matter of uh, just throwing uh, some of those combinations. Kevin Farrell's over in the Mike Reisinger's corner. Most of the fellows who are trainers have caught in the program in the past years. And they come back to help them out. And I think that's, that shows what this tradition is here at the point. Well, Dominic Arioli is one of the most respected people in, in amateur boxing. And these guys, I know, are thrilled every year to be invited by him back to help out with this program. Round two. Reisinger in the red and Brokudo in the white. Ali has to be enjoying the dancing out there. Uh, on his toes, both fighters. Good punches there by Mike Reisinger. He's right on the button, making good use of those quick combinations. He's study now. Study now and beat him to the punch right now. Good combination by El Bracuto. Good little, good little boxers that look for the opening. You notice that, Jim? Yeah, they're very smart fighters. Okay. El Bracuto dressed in white. Mike Reisinger dressed in red. Looking for an opening. Both fighters, and they're just. Uh, Fighters over the years of experience. Each of our fights has been uh, there's been constant action. You know what's good is um, Dominic, Kevin Farrell. They're very good at matching up fighters according to styles. Very very infrequently do you find a one-sided bout. Usually they're very competitive matches. We're seeing another one right here. And we do have uh, preliminary bouts. Three rounders for the boys are usually held uh, the, the week before the fight. This is going to be a tough one to judge. Yeah, this, yeah, this like one was as close as the first round, actually. To me, it's even all the way right now. They're going to have to come out in this third round, and uh, both fighters, they're going to give it their all. Well, Al Bacuto, he, uh, you know, he said the program has given him dis discipline, confidence, and something to really work for, and I think it's shown out here. And, uh, you know, each of the boys uh, that are in the program all, you know, indicate that they're, they're staying in great shape for other uh, sports. Uh, it's tougher even when you get older, you know, to stay in shape. Well, it's tough to stay in shape, but um, Dominic really puts them through a strong regimen regimentation on getting in shape. He wants a good performance out of his guys, and he knows he can only do that. They can only do that if he has them in tip-top shape. I had an opportunity to watch him uh, training here a week ago and working on different equipment, and uh, the boys really uh, concentrate uh, on getting themselves in top condition. Oh, yeah. It's a no-nonsense thing, but like you said, they're all friends, but right now they're competitors. Reisinger in the red and Brocudo in the white. Round three of our third bout of the evening. Brocudo trying to cut the distance down. Mike Reisinger back Petlin, but he's looking for the opening to counter.
Good combinations there by Bracuto. Bracuto warned for coming in with his head. I mean, um, Reisinger warned for coming in with his head. I like the way that Mike Reisinger is focused on his opponent, though. You know, he's looking for every open. They all very determined. Both guys are good fighters. They could match up well with any style. It'll be tough to lose this fight. Reach is the same 67 inches from both boys. Why, they didn't have uh, different clothes on. I wouldn't be able to tell one from the other, actually. Two pound weight difference, so they are matched up really, really closely. Now Bracuto taking the play right now. Good right hand by Brocudo and another right to the chin. Good counter by Mike Reisinger's. Good fight, guys. I think that third round. As you can really see, both go. boys just hugging each other. They felt that they both gave a, a great fight this evening. And now we'll wait for the decision. I don't know if you boys want to make a, right. this prediction for this one. Well, it's going to be a tough one, but I think uh, Bracuto in that third round uh, picked up a few points of his own. Bracuto? Yeah, I think so. I think if it, it comes down to the third round, I think that uh, I think Mike Reisinger might have the edge, so we're split on this one. Well, all right. You know? But, um, What's he I, know? Huh? What do I know is right? Well, I'll tell you, a couple of years ago, he I, I think he did 12 out of 13, so he knew a little <laughs> right. bit about that. Working with Jim last year. Well, this could he... be my um, my number one and the other way right now. Who knows? We'll find out in a few minutes here, though. I wouldn't want to be the judge, though. And ladies and gentlemen, oh, that's the winner true. by split decision out of the red corner, Mike Reisinger. Well, you got me on that one, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay to my right. <laughs> great fight, guys. It was a great Albert, fight, though. I mean, Albert Kudo, great effort. Mike Reisinger, congratulations. Muhammad Ali greeting the two fighters. He enjoyed it. Two more freshmen coming up in the next bout. That'll be what? Four bouts of the row that we've had freshmen? Yeah, this is four. I'm sticking out the freshman fight of the night tonight. Yeah. You know, I, I had, a, I had an opportunity uh, here uh, last Friday to uh, talk to Dom Arioli on how the program was developed, uh, you know, what he does, how long he's been involved, and, uh, you know, just what he feels comes out of the, uh, the actual boxing uh, program itself. Coach Dom, as you're known here at Aquinas, uh, how long have you been into the boxing program here? Well, besides participating, I've been... Um coaching around 19 years 20 years 19 years yeah I've been uh, running the program for about 14 years now well without you it would be a tough uh, go here at Aquinas wouldn't it no I don't think so you still got you still got kids here and that's the main thing that's the main thing right how much time do you put into the boxing program well we're here six days a week myself and my other coaches are here six, six days a week how long does this run uh, as far as the conditioning aspect and the training and then the actual bout? We start uh, right after, um, well, January recess, and then we go we start um, six days a week. Uh, we don't stop during winter recess either. We keep continue six days a week we're here. Some days we're here seven days a week. Like uh, last week, we're here Sunday. We'll be here this Sunday to get the kids ready for um, the big event. So the boys are not only in shape, they're ready as far as boxing skills are concerned. Yes, they are. Yes. Well, uh, Dom, I'm sure we're going to see some talented boxers out here this evening, and uh, it's really a privilege, I think, for the fans uh, to know that uh, they have someone like yourself in back of a, in back of the program and the kids. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, and I, I've got a lot of help from the other coaches, Kevin Farrell, Bob Erdis, and uh, Kevin Box for me. Um, back in 1980-81, and he came back, and he's very dedicated. Well, I'm sure we're going to see some great boxing. Good luck. Thank you. Right, thank you. See in the red corner, a freshman, Damon Bonecrusher Smith. Whoa. Damon 
Bone Crusher Smith, age 14, 135 pounds, 5 foot 11 with a 71 inch reach. And uh, we in the uh, right corner, Chris Latoski, 15 years old, 135 pounds, so they're evenly matched there, five foot six, so we're gonna have a height advantage uh, to Damon Smith. Well, I'll tell you, I used to do some PR work for James Bonecrusher Smith, former WBA heavyweight champion, and Damon Bonecrusher Smith is much better looking. <laughs> and Damon Smith also has a 71 inch reach compared to Latoski's 66 inch reach. That Smith in the red corner and Latoski with the white uniform. Chris Latoski. Chris Latoski with a big attack here on Damon Smith. And the referee's gonna give a standing eight count here. Boys wearing uh, weighing 135 pounds, but uh, Smith with a big, big advantage in the reach and the height. Smith's favorite. Great combinations there, Frank. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to you. Whoa! Latoski may have the shorter reach, but he barrels right in there. Well, he's cutting the distance down, and it's tough for um, it's tough for uh, Damon Smith to, to get the best leverage off his punches. That's that's the trick, you know. When Muhammad Ali was fighting Joe Frazier, Frazier was always trying to stay inside. We've had two standing eight counts already. One more, and this fight is officially over, I believe. And we're going to have our first stoppage of the night. And Chris Latowski is going to get the victory over Damon Smith. That will officially be called Referee Stops Contest in round one. The referee intercedes if he feels that the uh, uh, the boy is uh, being yes. injured in some way, or is it uh, or at is his option? Is there a mandatory number of eight counts that are involved? Well, three three standing eight counts or three knockdowns in a round is a rule where a fight is automatically stopped. And usually it's because a boxer has been put in a predicament state. That's what happened in this fight right here. We'll be right back with more action from Aquinas Institute right after these short messages. We care. Don't, Don't drive drunk. drunk. Chris Latoski gets the win over Damon Smith. Awarding the medals to each boy for their participation in the bout this evening. I hope Damon comes back next year to the program because he'll learn a lot. These freshmen, you know, it's a lot of inexperience. But uh, congratulations to Chris Latoski. Another special guest, ladies and gentlemen, we want to acknowledge tonight the Rochester Boxing Hall of Fame will be having its dinner coming up in May. And among those being inducted is one of the great former boxers from our town and absolutely the best teacher in our town. Boxing teacher is the great legendary Ozzy Sussman is right down here. Ozzy. Another guest in the audience, Ozzy Sussman, longtime boxer, longtime trainer. You see Ozzy here almost every year. Ozzy was one of the greatest um, amateur fighters to ever come out of here. In fact, as an amateur, he and Nello Nuccelli put like 14,000 people in Silver Stadium for an amateur fight. And that is remarkable. Ozzy trained a lot of boys at his gym. Ozzy is the Ozzy's a great man. He sure sure has taught a lot of people self-defense and how to handle themselves. Lightweight division. Our 
our fifth bout Boxing coming up. In the red shorts, and red corner, Stephen Graves, 14 years old, 130 pounds, with a reach of 69 inches and a height of 5 foot 8 inches. In the white corner, Michael Burke. 11th grade, age 17, 143 pounds, with a reach of 69 inches and a height of 5 foot 9. A little weight advantage uh, to Michael Burke of 13 pounds, about the same height and the same reach. A little experience here uh, to Michael Burke. Kurt Mowry is the referee for this contest. Mike Burke coming right in. Although Burke, this is uh, Burke's first year in the program, so it doesn't give that much of an advantage, although he is a junior. It's interesting, Jim, that uh, Graves' favorite fighter is Willie Pep. Wow. Well, Willie Pep, the Will of the Wisp, one of the greatest fighters ever, also. Remarkable win streak with Willie Pep. Remarkable fighter, feather, world featherweight champion. Probably considered along with. We have, uh, is that no nose bleeding here? That was interesting. I remember in, uh, yeah. at the 50th anniversary in the program, there was one of the old boxers said that there was fellows who used, to, their nose started to bleed before they even got into the ring. So. <laughs> Not an injury, it's just one of those things. Yeah, it appears like Graves' nose is uh, opened up. Well, one year I watched um, 13 bouts and I saw 25 nosebleeds out of the 26 guys. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating. I well, we saw one a, a week ago when we were watching the training. Uh, one boy kind of just dropped his guard for uh, a second and uh, well, it's all it Unfortunately, takes. he received the gloves right in the nose. How uh, heavy are these gloves? These gloves right here are eight ounce gloves. And um, when they're in training, they'll use even 16 ounce gloves to, um, you know, to prevent any kind of injury. But these are, these are really the weights that uh, pros, pros wear. Um, some pro gloves are even a little bit lighter. But um, this provides you know, enough speed for the guys and gives them, gives them as much protection as, uh, as is necessary. Pat, how do you see that first one? Well, sort of even. I thought uh, both boys uh, went at it. I, obviously, uh, we had one of the fighters uh, grazed with his bloody nose, so uh, must have been a good, uh, good hit in there. Pat, throughout the years uh, in the mission bout, uh, bouts, they've had a lot of uh, uh, individual students that have started as freshmen and gone on to three and four championships. Uh, some of these people, uh, Larry Allen, I believe, a uh, three-time champion back uh, in the late, late 40s, was it? Uh, yeah, it was in the late 40s that Larry uh, was a champion, I think, for th three years in a row. Uh, and there's a lot of others. Frank Welly, I think Jim mentioned him before. Uh, Jim Crow Miller in the late 60s. Al Bracuto, whose son fought tonight two years in a row in the early 70s. Round two between Stephen Graves and Michael Burke. Graves in the red shorts, Burke in the white. He's got a nice jab there, and he's also um, throwing that right hand over the top. And um, that's one of the reasons why why uh, Stephen Graves got a little bit of a nosebleed there right now. You can also see the headgear is giving uh, Stephen a little bit of a problem seeing. Look, it's coming down right over his eyes, doesn't it? If you notice, Mike Burke is trying to control the center of the ring right there. Full house this evening at the new Aquinas uh, Gymnasium. For years, Pat, uh, they moved this from uh, the old Aquinas uh, to uh, 
the sports arena, then on to the roster uh, war memorial, and they had full houses. Why did they come back uh, to the uh, school grounds? Well, I think it's just uh, one of those things that the principals at the time uh, thought that it was tradition to fight at Aquinas rather than make it a big thing like the Golden Gloves. Uh, and I feel that they just wanted to come back. When we had the 50th, we tried to get the War Memorial again, and they felt that it was better to have that anniversary at Aquinas where the whole thing started in the old gym rather than make it a big spectacular. So with the new gym, we can hold all, got five times as many people. The old gym would take up only half of the people in one stand. So. I understand there's supposed to be 1,800 people here this evening. Yeah, in the old gym, I think uh, maybe if we got 400 and 500 and we were lucky. Well, it seats a little over 900 for basketball, and then with the boxing, when we can get the people on the floor, then we can get a lot more people in. And I Kirk Mowry's the, calling for some help here. The headgear is a factor right here, right now, and in, um, in Stephen Graves having to be attended to. Now they stopped the clock. For well, they stopped the fight because the um, gear came down over his eyes and that I think is attributing to his nosebleed there a little bit also. He's unable to see Jim, the when they Jim, when they have a time like this, does, do they actually stop the clock yes, and the then clock, they begin again? The clock does right. stop and then it resumes on the referee's command. Yeah. But um, Mike Burke is really controlling this action right now with that jab in the right hand coming over the top. Well, we have one more round coming up here in the fifth bout of the evening. We're uh, now in uh, Michael Burke's corner, getting instructions from his trainer. Michael Burke's favorite boxer, Lennox Lewis. Geez, Lennox Lewis is a nice guy also. I met Lennox Lewis up in Toronto right after he won the gold medal for Canada. And um, he's gone on to, to um, become the WBA heavyweight champion. And um, he is um, really fights out of Great Britain now. And uh, he's got a big bout coming up soon. He's going to be boxing more often over here in the United States because he's hoping to force a fight with Evander Holyfield. Burke coming right out, and uh, he's throwing some punches, knowing that this is the round, round three. Mike continues to dictate the uh, pace here with that left jab. Already he's got Steven's nose bleeding again, but Steven's really not hurt. He just, you know, what it is really is Mike's a little bit stronger. He's two years older in age, you know, and his um, punches are just a little bit quicker, and he's throwing the straighter punches. You know, Steven's looking, Steven's trying to get in, but he's also um, anticipating that jab coming at him, and it's throwing his offense off a little bit. is throwing the more punishing punches. Uh, yeah, he is. They're and landing solider. And, and, and his punches, really, he's not trying to hurt Steven. He's just he's just doing what he's got to do to to carry the action. Because sure. Steven's very game. He is trying to get back into the fight. And we got an interruption here again because of the nosebleed. And they have a medical staff uh, right at ringside. Every uh, amateur professional show that takes place, it's um, a requirement and a law that we have to have a medical staff on hand. That's why boxing has become one of the safest sports in the, um, in the world right now. The, we've, we've learned from some of the mistakes that have happened over the years, and, and um, we don't want anything to happen to the athletes that, um, in, in which they're not fully protected.
allowed, are they allowed so many timeouts uh, such as this uh, for either uh, injury or repairs? Yeah, well, in, in some damage, it depends on the level of competition. This is a thing for the uh, mission bouts. The object is to good sportsmanship. These guys are not trying to kill each other. Um, if you're talking about a national competition, um, then you would see less tolerance of this. You know? But um, like you pointed out before, these are these are friends that are out there performing in front of uh, families and in front of friends for a great cause. But for nine minutes, they look at nine each minutes. other and they're determined well, to win. It's like the Olympic Games, you know, and uh, for a lot of kids, this is their Olympic Games, and to, to go home on Aquinas Champion you're, is, a, is a thing that you want to do. Another great bout between Michael Burke and Stephen Graves, and we'll wait for the decision, but Jim, how do you see it? Well, I think Mike Burke's got, you know, won a clear-cut decision, and um, you got to hand it to Stephen, you know, because he had that nosebleed from the first round, and, and he was very game and stayed right with him, so. Pat, how do you see it? Well, I have to agree with Jim this time. I thought Mike put up a good fight there. And uh, the, some good jabs, a couple of good right hands. But we'll see how the judges see it. John Nucitelli, uh, former president of the Board of Trustees and president of the Sports Boosters, is going to present these medals. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, by unanimous decision, of the blue corner, Mike Burke. Michael Burke, the winner of our fifth bout of the evening. being made in, in the ring at the present time to John Nusatelli. Over the last 10 to 15 years, he's done everything, uh, he's just done everything. And John is a very small token of our appreciation. And I know that this is killing me right now. We would like to make this presentation to you with uh, our, our deep respect and love for everything that you've done for Aquinas. We've uh, had a mirror done inscribed 1994 Sports Boosters Club Award to John Nusitelli. For your dedication, leadership, and constant smile, you exemplify the, the true spirit of Aquinas. From this day on, you will be known as Mr. Aquinas. Thanks, John. That's it for John, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. John Nusitelli. Before we get it. We'll have our sixth bout of the evening coming up very shortly. But uh, coming in, uh, sitting next to me is Tony Listione, uh, the president of the Rochester Boxing Hall of Fame. And uh, Tony put together a great article on my Muhammad Ali. But Tony, uh, give us some kind of uh, views of uh, how do you see this thing this evening? Frank, this is super. It's just awesome. This is uh, 62 years in the history of Aquinas Mission about 62 years. This is it. This is peaking right now. 62 years, and uh, we have the greatest boxer of all time here, the great Muhammad Ali, the man who transcends boxing and uh, the most recognizable face uh, on earth, M Muhammad Ali. It's a great night for boxing in Rochester. It really is. 
Uh, Tony, the two boys in the ring in the uh, red uh, shorts is Joe Miratore and Mike Armstrong in the uh, white uh, uniform. They're both uh, pretty equal, five foot eight, five foot nine, uh, except there's a uh, about a 30 pound advantage uh, to Mike Armstrong. Right. Both freshmen. Right. I see some good boxing. I see one of the best bouts of the evening, really. Some good footwork. I see some uh, some uh, changes, uh, combinations here. I see one of the best bouts of the evening, Frank, really. You know, so look at look at the footwork. These boxes have improved over the years under the tutelage of uh, Dominic Arioli. Some good boxing tonight, and I think Muhammad Ali is very impressed too. I was uh, focusing in on Muhammad as he sits ringside, and he's really intense uh, tonight. Really, uh, really into this bout. Tony, you've been to these bouts uh, for a number of years. Yeah, uh, I've been coming for a lot of years since I've attended Aquinas. Uh, I graduated from this great school in 1967. I'm very proud to be a uh, Aquinas alumni, and I hope my son will follow the tradition. You know, Tony, what makes uh, what makes the school uh, continue uh, the boxing program in itself, uh, where other high schools throughout the country have dropped uh, boxing? Well, the central goal is that uh, the proceeds. Everything comes together, the proceeds go to the mission for a great cause. When you see that mission, uh, the mission donations go to Colombia and other four countries, I think that uh, Americans, uh, we, we are well off, you know, I mean, a lot better than other countries. We have a great heart. We, ha we are very sympathetic to, uh, to uh, poor countries, and I think that uh, the Aquinas, Aquinas students, uh, the hard work, the tradition, the excellence of the school, and the dedication and the discipline, it just all comes together and, uh, for this program because it is for a great cause. Remember, Ali once said, service, uh, the service that we pay uh, toward others is the rent that we obtain in heaven. I believe that's what he said, and it's giving back, and that's what these students are doing tonight. I'm so proud of them. That's the Aquinas tradition. Tony, how did you see round one? I mean, round one, I, I think it's pretty even. Pretty even. I, I saw some good boxing tonight. Pat, really how did you see round one? Well, Jim's sitting next to me, and both of us thought that uh, Joe Muratore uh, took round one. Close. But he is, uh, he outweighs him by about 30 pounds. Uh, is that Muratore? Muratore's in the red, and okay. uh, Armstrong's in the white. I see some good footwork tonight. Look at this. Some, uh, it's one of the better bouts. It really is. Got a little blood coming from Armstrong's nose. Muratore likes Riddick Bow. And uh, Tony, is there any big uh, events coming up in the, uh, as far as the boxing world is concerned, uh, concerned in Rochester? Uh, in Rochester, we, uh, well, the Rochester Boxing Hall of Fame is planning its fourth annual uh, banquet, awards banquet, for May 13th at the Mapledale Party House, and we're bringing in, uh, of course, the main event is uh, um, Carmen Basilio, the tough onion farmer who was the former two-time wellerweight and middleweight champion of the world, and uh, bringing in the wellerweight champion who Carmen fought, you know, one of the uh, two bouts, greatest fights in uh, uh, wellerweight boxing history, T tough Tony DeMarco from Boston. We're also bringing in Gene Fulmer from Utah, who fought Carmen as a as a middleweight, they were two great fights, and uh, Bob Foster, who was ranked in the top ten light heavyweights of all time, he fought the great Muhammad Ali and Smoking Joe Frazier. So we have four. How do we get champions. tickets for this, Tony? Ah, uh, you can call me at 964-3077 or the Mapledale Party House. Well, the audience, and, uh, I'm sure, uh, would uh, like to attend. Any you. boxing fan out there, That's right. they'll give you a call. We got uh, right. Joe Miratore in Miratore. the red and uh, Mike uh, Armstrong in the white. It's a good fight. Look how they're mixing it up here. I, I'm really enjoying this fight. What do you see in the styles, uh, Tony, as far as... Uh, I see... Uh, 
Like I said, I see some good talent out there. I think Dominic is, uh, and, and Kevin Farrell are both training these fighters uh, uh, to box, you know, to box a lot more, and uh, and I, it's all coming together tonight. It's one of the better bouts of the evening. They're all good. They're we'll, all good. we'll look for your uh, expert judgment uh, in a third round. Thank you. How you see it, Pat? Thanks I thought much. that round was even. I thought both of the fighters boxed very well, and, and uh, Armstrong came back in that round, but the Murator stuck right with him, so I thought it was a, an even round. So a real important round uh, coming up. That's right. It's true. Armstrong had uh, some good rights that last round. Murator came right back, so we'll see what happens there. I got Murator ahead in the fight by just a little right now. But two scrappy boxes. Throughout history of the mission bouts, uh, some of the past champions, uh, they went on to, uh, you know, illustrious careers professionally, uh, judges, uh, doctors, uh, and so forth. Any of these people you can relate to quickly? Well, Don Mark. Uh, I mean, we all know Don, the uh, judge here in the city. Don fought here for many years and worked with the Mission Bouts as a referee before we uh, got affiliated with the, uh, the ABF. He, uh, besides being a great jurist, uh, was a uh, hero during World War II at Iwo Jima. Uh, I also think of a Judge Mastrella, who fought here in the early Mission Bouts and then went on to uh, fight at Syracuse University. Frank Afrani, another Supreme Court judge, whose son's fought here, who's one of his sons is a, a corner man tonight. So a number of the ex-fighters uh, stay on uh, with the program uh, years after they leave uh, Aquinas. Every trainer and corner man here tonight is an Aquinas graduate who has fought in the uh, program. You got Bob Yurtis from 1972, Brian Wade from 1991, Tim and John Schwab from 87, B.J. Zapp from 88, Chris Afrani from 88, Dan Robinson from 90. That's Murator in the red. The end of round three. Tony, how did you see that one? I think Muratori won the fight. Uh, he took the third round. It was close, but I give it to Muratori. I, I give the fight to Muratori. Well, so far, we've had some expert judging here. How did you see it, Pat? Well, I you and Jim Muratori. over there. Muratori? What about you, Jim? You... I, I thought Muratori won it, especially with that uh, last 30 seconds of his third round. Well, we'll wait for the decision, and then we will go on uh, Kevin Farrell. Uh, we'll meet uh, Israel Sack in the uh, one of our exhibitions here. And as you were saying, uh, Izzy Sack uh, weighing th in at 300 pounds, although Kevin Farrell uh, was a former uh, New York State champion in the amateur ranks. Ladies and the gentlemen, amateur ranks. the winner by majority decision on the red corner, Joe Mirachar. Majority decision, a lot closer. He'll be back, Frank. Awarding the medals. He'll be back. He's too good of a fighter now. As you can see by a number of the people in the audience, uh, boxing greats. Uh, a lot of Christian faith and a lot of hard work to get this facility built. And the money raised tonight, as you all know, will go to help the work of the missions in Mexico and in Colombia. At the same time, we also want to acknowledge the faith of Muhammad Ali, that to be a good Muslim, to be a good person, means giving in yourself. And ladies and gentlemen, Muhammad Ali has done that throughout his career. Tonight, he waived his appearance fee to be with us in Rochester.
Rich Funky, the ring announcer, just made the statement that Muhammad Ali waived his fee, his appearance fee, to come to Rochester to acknowledge the boxing program here at Aquinas. Pat, in our next bout here, uh, Kevin Farrell, what can you tell us about him? Well, Kevin's an Aquinas graduate. Fought here in the mission bout, went on to the Golden Gloves and uh, was the amateur boxing champ of New York in his weight class. Kevin then came back and helped out his trainer ever since uh, graduation and has helped uh, Dom along with the, the kids. The kids really like him. Uh, every once in a while we get a fighter like Izzy Sack that comes in and there's just nobody in that weight class. 300 Kevin pounds. puts it back. 300, 300 pounds with a 78 inch reach, six foot five. And a good football player, I might add. Ladies and gentlemen, our next foul will be from the Izzy is, is by far the largest boxer to come through the program. Really? And he's shown great coordination and speed for a big man. In, in fact, his right hand has already dropped one of the leather heavyweight bags in the training room. Well, as you can see, he's no small, no small boy. No, I can see that. And the kids love him here at Aquinas. Wow, well, we'll see Aquinas. an interesting bout. Frank, I just want uh, you to know that um, Kevin Farrell goes way back in boxing. He fought in the Empire State Games the same time that Mike Tyson did as an amateur. They shared the same dressing room together. So Mike, Mike has a lot of boxing experience. Uh, Kevin Farrell, rather. Hey, look at him. Very slick in that. And if, is he's not, uh, he's not afraid. He's going to go no, after him. No, he's not. No, he's, he's not. not after him. <laughs> Kevin Farrell being the sharp, Farrell being the sharper, he is dodging a lot of the punches. Kevin showing a little ring rust, but uh, well, he'll be back. <laughs> oh. Kevin's doing a lot of backpedaling. I would too. Is he with that long reach? Is uh, Izzy reminds me of heavyweight Jess Willard, champ Jess Willard. Big, big man. He moves pretty well for yeah, 300 yes, he pounds. Does. He really does. He's graceful. He's, yes, he is. If you watch his footwork, he's uh, he's really graceful in his, his steps and so forth. He's, he's got quick hands, too, Frank, yeah. if you watch him. 300 pounds, he's as big as I am. <laughs> Yeah, he's taken a couple of good shots from uh, from Kevin and hasn't. Uh... Kevin Farrell with the red uniform and Izzy Sack, the junior from Aquinas, in the white. Kevin's going to feel this tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Kevin's going to sleep there tomorrow. <laughs> End of round one. We're over in Kevin's corner. Now uh, just uh, into Izzy Sack. Is he getting some instructions from the trainers? Is he look pretty good? He's pretty, uh, you know, he's pretty, pretty mobile for uh, for a big guy like that. He's certainly brave. He's right there. I think if anybody uh, earned some respect, it was him. <laughs> We've seen some great bouts this evening. A lot of action right from the opening bell. Well, I give Kevin credit for getting in with somebody like Izzy because he is quick. Okay. Round two, Kevin Farrell in the red, Izzy Sack in the white. Exhibition. Kevin doing that inside body work there. Izzy's, Izzy's big guy, he's got that straight jab. I know this is interesting for Kevin because he probably taught Izzy how to jab like that. Now he's probably wishing he hadn't. I think Izzy's going after the knockout, but uh, Kevin's brushing off a yeah. lot of punches. He uh, is, he is. Yeah. His past experience is showing. Yeah, it is. So. 
Call that ring savvy. Years of ring savvy, and it's he's putting it to use tonight. Kevin Shawna, he hasn't lost anything. Of course, Kevin's going pretty easy. But every so often, he tries to let Izzy know who the coach is. Hey, you can be very proud of Kevin. He works all all season with the kids. He really trains them hard, and uh, uh, I'm very proud of him. Well, we all are in the Rochester boxing community. 78-inch reach. He's not afraid to keep coming no, in. No, no. Yeah, and he comes in punching, too. I like it. A lot of courage. Uh, some body shots. Uh, had a boy, Ke Kevin. Look at Kevin. He gave Izzy a couple of good body shots there. Izzy didn't even blink. Uh, he's, a, he's a nice boy. I like it. Round two. Right. How do you see it so far? Oh, I'm going to give that round to Izzy. A couple of good crowd pleasers this even, evening. Yeah, good bout. Nice, nice inside body shots. You know, he's, yeah. He's, um, he's showing Izzy that there's a lot more to be learned in the game. And stuff. And Izzy's a very determined guy. I really like him. You can see him bobbing and just yeah. waving from side to side, and as uh, as he gets ready to throw the punch, it uh, moves well. Yeah. He's a good kinda, hands. Kind of kid you like the coach. And I know that's why Kevin's out there with him. He's quick. Plus, I don't think there's too many guys on this team that are uh, big enough to really be in a ring with AC. Referee Dick Pazdoki always does an excellent job refereeing the bouts year after year. Well, they're going to come out for the third round, really throwing yeah. some leather here. Oh, yeah. It's all oh, it's turning to a brawl. I think Kevin wants some respect. <laughs> Busy was very determined, I think. A Kevin, good left hand in there. Kevin had to show him that um, he's still the coach. I think Izzy got him with a couple of good shots. Kevin's the boss. Uh, you know, years ago, I saw an exhibition between Lyle Alzado and Muhammad Ali. And Alzado was going to come in, and he was going to really rough up Muhammad. Muhammad came right out, did the same thing you just saw right away. Lyle got the, got the uh, message. He was in the ring, and he wasn't on the football is he's a little more cautious than when he was in the first he two is, rounds. He is. He's, he's covering up now. That's a smart move on his part, too. So. This is a real entertaining uh, contest, though. I'm really impressed. Kevin's in such good shape, you know. So, you know, he works out just as hard as his kids do with the kids. Yes, he does. That's true. Well, you know, with the weather the way it's been this year, the yeah. kids used to run up and down the street, and I'd see them every day. But uh, with the, the cold weather, they've had to do it inside the old gym and the school. Yeah. But Kevin was always right out there leading the pack with them. Sure. So. Oh, that's the thing. These coaches are in the fitness, really in the fitness. Hey, end of round three. A, right hand by Izzy right there. A great exhibition. Good job. Very exciting fight. Action-packed bout. Fans very appreciative. I don't know if they'll have a decision on this one. Well, we'll give it to Izzy. We'll give it to Izzy. Oh, I thought it was Izzy all the way. No offense, Kev. Well, Evan's tired. Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably just an exhibition. Let's have a great hand for both our guys. Both participants, an exhibition. They good fight, good exhibition. They did an excellent job. Excellent, right. More boxing at Aquinas. But first, we will take a short intermission. Be back with you shortly for the other six bouts. Begin with raw steel. Shape it with fire, muscle, and sweat. Polish it to razor sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men with a medal to be Marines. 
Back to live boxing action from the Wegman Pier Athletic and Science Center in Rochester, New York. This is Franco Pacheski along with my partners, Jim Cassidy and Pat Dugan. Jim, uh, we're in the eighth bout of the evening here. Uh, we're now getting into the more experienced boxers. What well, can we see? Uh, well, now is when you're going to see the. Now you're going to see the whole program uh, really speed up a little bit. These guys are more experienced, and they're very interested in becoming, you know, in becoming Aquinas champions. That's a great part of tradition. And speaking of tradition, referee in this contest is is Frank Shasha, and this is the 19th year that he's been refereeing in this program right here. So. Frank the, comes from a real famous family of uh, sportsmen in this town also. In this eighth bout of the evening, Nick Valentino, we had a chance to talk to him uh, before the bout, uh, and uh, he was able to provide us uh, some personal information of why he uh, is in the boxing program, uh, what he feels his strong points are, and what he's looking to do in this evening's match. That's Nick, Nick Valentino. What possessed you to get into boxing at Aquinas? Well, uh, I, like, wanted to, I went out and I used to watch the mission bouts before, and I saw how hard these guys worked and how much like, good competition would be, and I thought I could try out and do my best. Nick, in a short period of time, what do you feel your skills uh, have progressed to? Um, I think I've progressed a lot uh, just by learning from my coaches and how much they've given to me as far as skill-wise and how they brought me along. Any specific types of punches that you've uh, been able to master? Uh, I haven't really mastered too many. I mean, I, I like the left hook and I like the uppercut, but just I like throwing as many as I can. Nick, tonight, uh, in tonight's bout, uh, what can we look forward uh, to seeing from you? Um, hopefully a lot of movement and uh, hopefully just a good all-around play. Well, Nick, I'm sure we will uh, be entertained. Good luck. Thank you very much. In the white corner and Vinny Ray in the red corner. So it's Valentino in white and Ray in red. Two very aggressive boys here. Valentino, the junior, and Vinnie Ray, the sophomore, at 140 pounds. Valentino, 134 pounds. Well, Nick Valentino came right out smoking there, right at the start. And uh, you can see Vinnie Ray, he's ready to answer the challenge. We got a real good matchup. These are two competitive guys right here. You can see their spirits are bursting out of those bodies here. Valentino. Good punches by Valentino, but um, Vinny Ray covered up there. A couple got through, but he covered a couple covered up for a couple good shots. Valentino's favorite boxer, Ray Boom Boom Mancini. And Ken Norton is Vinny Ray's. Good right by Valentino there. Good counter there by Valentino. You're right, Pat. Good jab by Valentino. Jab. Keeping him off balance. Then he ought to keep his hands up a little bit higher. Good right. Oh, Good a right. hard right hand by Vinny Ray. Valentino, Valentino now the aggressor. They only bo both only have one year of boxing experience. Well, they learned a lot in that one year. Both guys trading jabs. End of nice. round Good one. Round. Good round. Crowd likes it. After that pause, they're excited to have a good, good scrappy uh, first round like that. We're in Valentino's corner. Nick getting some instructions from his trainer. And over in the red corner, Vinny Ray. Vinny listening to his handlers. Two good little fighters. I have to give that first round, though, to Valentino. I think he came out uh, and really 
wanted to take this fight to the finish it off right away. And uh, I think that uh, Nick, with the crowd behind him, I think his classmates were over there cheering him on, so he wanted to show them he could do it. Well, we'll see round two. Nick Valentino, Vinny Ray. Valentino Ooh. comes out. And Benny Ray retaliates. Both boxers really throwing leather. Valentino going after Ray. Ray recovers. Valentino getting the best of that barrage. Got a little bit of claret there coming from, from the nose of Vinny. Excellent fight. Valentino, Valentino mixing them punches real nice. Pops a jab, comes with a right hand underneath. He's keeping Vinny off just a little bit. Vinny ought to keep his hands a little bit higher, too. Vinny's got the reach advantage, but Nick is staying right in there. But he really can't take advantage of that. Well, when you're putting the hands up to block the punch, you know, that's too late to throw the punch back, the counter with your shot, so. Valentino moving around the ring wisely. Mixing with good combinations. Ray trying to step in and cut that distance down, but Valentino's moving around the ring. Now Ray's got him in the corner and tried to open up. Then he pushed him off. Nick, Nick pushed him off, I should say. Referee doing a good job of uh, keeping, me, keeping the fight going. Frank Shasha is one of the premier amateur referees in the country. Let's the guys fight. Always, uh, always in tune to what's going on and stays out of their way. And the round two. Another good round. A lot of punches thrown in these first two rounds. Two well-trained fighters. There's Valentino getting uh, his instructions for round three, a very important round in his bout. How did you see that round, Jim? I thought Valentino had the edge again. I think that he's mixing his punch as well. Popping the jab out there, he's got Vinny's nose bleeding a little bit. If he, if Vinny keep his hands up a little higher, he'd be able to catch that punch with his right glove and, and, and counter with that left right back again. But uh, Pat, how'd you see it so far? I thought Valentino, by staying inside like he was, really cut down on uh, Vinny's reach, uh, and so he cut off that advantage and then used a good counter punching. So I think I give that one to uh, to Nick also. Getting some excellent comments from both uh, Jim and Pat on the uh, on the rounds. So it's uh, giving you some idea of, as to how the scoring is taking place as we go through the fight. Valentino right hand comes out very aggressive, and Ray hanging right in there. They're answering each other, punch for punch. There goes. Ray covering up. Nick Valentino trying to take charge here, and he's doing it. Vinny Ray, brave guy. No quitting him. He's right there, ready to fire. He's just trying to get by that jab. He's got that rapier jab there like Larry Allen used to have. Good right hand, rocked it, it rocked uh, Vinny there. It was just a glancing blow there. He's trying to set him up. He's trying to set him up by holding the glove out. Ray still dancing. Ooh. Valentino with a hard right hand. Valentino in white, that way in the red hard, trunks. Man. Valentino sits back waiting for him to drop his guard and then he lets him have it. Vinny's got to keep them hands up. 
because Nick's just uh, popping that jab in there and just taking right over this uh, this whole fight right now. And and Vinny's not a bad fighter. He's really a good fighter, you know. But you got to keep the hands up. Well, they're getting tired at this time. They've thrown a lot of punches, both fighters. And we're coming to the end of round three. Good fight. Crowd likes this fight. I'll tell you, though, we got a nosebleed on um, one guy and a lip cut on the other. So the end of round three. Jim, you still staying with Valentino, winning the first two rounds. Well, I think, I think Nick won the fight. But when it comes to shedding blood, it was pretty even, really. Pat, uh, kind of see it the same way. I, I think Nick won the fight, but I don't think it's going to be a unanimous decision. I think that Vinny put up one heck of a fight. I think this is a fight that's up for the fight of the night, too. Right now it is, I'll tell you. That's um, this is the kind of fights that shows the experience of the guys. and Both the boys the come together, congratulating each other on a great evening. Now they're friends again. But they know they just spent nine minutes of hard work. Well, I like to say, these two guys have done something that nobody else in this arena has. They've gone to the top of that mountain in front of all these people and dared to look over the other side. And um, they're going to be friends for life. They're going to remember when they're 30, 40, 50 years old, when they got in the ring here and Muhammad Ali was here and they fought their hearts out. I see a lot of uh, alumni here tonight, uh, and a lot of those come from these guys. This guy that was Nick Valentino, the winner of our eighth bout of the evening. Nick with a wink to the crowd. I remember when uh, Ali used to do that. Each of the boys received their award. Good fight, guys. As Father Gardner, he was the uh, former principal here at Aquinas. It was so always for the mission belt, I might add. He, he is uh, in Toronto right now. And into the ring for our ninth bout. In the red corner, Dominic Pizzola. And in the white will be Mario Avila. Avila Sr., 17 years old, 170 pounds. Dominic Pizzolo is a junior, 16 years old, 170 pounds. So they're equally in weight. And uh, a four inch reach to Avila with a three inch height advantage to Avila. And uh, Avila's uh, favorite boxer is Oscar De La Hoya, the real up-and-coming uh, fighter. Well, last year, the kids in this program had the opportunity to meet Oscar and to be part of Oscar's professional show at the War Memorial. So it doesn't surprise me that some of these kids were here last year look at Oscar because he's a tremendous role model. Mario, a stand-up boxer, and has developed a, a punishing right hand to complement the stinging left jab. And Dom uh, is a very strong boxer, throws a powerful right cross. Mario in the white outfit, blue helmet, two Dominic. and Two and three years experience in these fighters. This is going to be a good fight. You can tell they want to get at each other right away. Seniors don't like to lose the juniors, and juniors would love to walk around school knowing that they beat the seniors. Dom Pozzola in the red, and Mario Vela. In the white. Both boys feeling each other out. Dominic threw their right hand over the top to the side of the head of, of Mario. Mario using that nice jab. Good right hand by Mario. Good counter by Dominic.
good exchanges in there, both these guys. There's, there's already respect seeping in there. They're looking for more of an opening than just going and jabbing. Well, both of them have been real good at counterpunching the other, and so they're, uh, they realize that. Two good right hands there. Dominic landed two good right hands as Mario was landing on the, with that jab. Another good jab by, by Mario. Good luck, good one too. Mario taking, taking charge with that jab right now. Lands a good right hand, good right cross there also. The bouts get better because of the experience. Experience is right. And they're and they're end of round one. And they become more mature too. These guys are a lot closer to being men. Happens overnight. You know, you look at these guys and you blink your eye and suddenly these little boys are looking you in the eye. Well, 6'2", six to, six to 170 pounds, 5'11", 170 pounds. Uh, they're no longer just uh, small, uh, they, oh, a small in stature, men. yes. They seem to be well matched too. I mean, they just, yeah. Both boys, because I guess because of their experience, that they're really uh, looking for the openings, the good combinations. Yeah. Always amaze me how the um, coaches here in doing their matchmaking always have that ability to have these guys seem to come about the same level. You know, they peak in training right about the same way, so their fights are always very interesting and competitive. And you look at Dom Pozzola, he, he's eager to get into the center of the ring and uh, start punching. Well, Dominic reacts to pep talks, you can tell. They keep interchanging the referees each bout to keep them fresh. Yeah, every every fight they um, they switch off. They're all very confident. Well, we're seeing some haymakers from these two Italian guys. They're fighting like a couple Irish guys. This this fight's a Donnybrook. Well, they uh, from their coach's evaluation, they both throw a strong right hand. We've seen that. Take a little rest and they go toe to toe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ali sitting across from us uh, at ringside uh, is just enjoying every one of the uh, fights. Oh, he's he's enjoying the fights. He's enjoying the crowd, the city, and they all love him. There's a haymaker. Didn't land, but uh, Mario landed some clean shots. Feel the breeze over here. Mario landing at one, two right now, and he's doing well. Dominic's Dominic's throwing a little bit wild. His punches are now going around, and and uh, Mario's throwing some straight there. shots. Like they say, shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and that's that's the key. It's straight jab. Pat, in the picking the fight of the night, uh, who does this? Do they have a committee of judges or the judges and the referees that pick the fighter? Of the and night. they pick the fighter. So it's picked by people that really know boxing. Here 
We're now looking at Dominic Fazola's corner, getting instruction from his trainers. Big round coming up. Mario, Mario Avila in white and Dominic Pizzola in the red trunks. Fighters touch gloves and first one to attack is, is um, Dominic. toe-to-toe -to -toe boxing there, Jim. Right now, they're both fighting uh, on the inside, and you're kind of smothering each other. So neither one of them is getting their punches off. Dominic's still throwing them outside haymakers, trying to land it and turn this fight around. They're not jabbing to get in, they're just throwing no. one punch yeah, they've and then swinging the away at each other. Not afraid to step in there. They're willing to take the punch to throw one. Good jab, good jab by Mario Vila. As you said earlier, Jim, it's nothing to see a little blood flow from the nose. Uh, I had a little blood fly over here on my uh, on my roster a little while ago. So. Mario landing the cleaner shots, but. Um, both boys clinched. These guys are both two tired guys right now. The end of round three. A real hard fought fight. And I think both boys said thank God at that by the way they grabbed each other because they were getting a little tired at the end there. Oh yeah, they were tired. Tough fight, but I thought Avila. Yeah, I, I thought Mario wanted to, and right now he's got the cheers of the crowd. But uh, good effort also by Dominic. Next year he'll be the senior, and um, he's just going to get better also because he's a very good fighter. He needs to, Dominic needs to concentrate on his jab a little bit more, you know, and, and to pop that because that was Mario's strength, the ability to land the left jab and then throw the right hand right behind it. Yeah, Mario had some good combination coming in with the jab, then coming with the right. And we're here, the referee's decision. So far, uh, the both of you have uh, been uh, pretty close with the decisions. Well, Jim's one ahead of me. Well, it helps our fans uh, enjoy the bout because as we're going through each round by round, they can judge themselves and see if they're close uh, in our evaluation. Well, you know, I've been in, you know, I've been a fan of boxing for a lot of years, but the way that I really got to understand the sport was when I was a young kid. I used to sit at home, watch television, and I would score fights myself. And gradually I learned and developed an eye like many of the officials have. You know, get accustomed to it and stuff, but it's it's a great sport, you know. I, I really enjoy it, and you can pick out who's getting the advantage of it, and you learn so much from, from, uh, from really studying it. In our next bout coming up in the red corner will be Rory Zimmer, a sophomore, 15 years old, 125 pounds, five foot seven inches. And then in the white corner uh, with the white trunks, Eric Schmalzbauer, a senior, 120 pounds, five foot seven inches tall, three years of boxing experience, two years for Rory Zimmer.
So it, uh, it looks like we're having a senior against a sophomore, and uh, Rory must have some ex uh, boxing experience to be able to compete with Eric. I remember Eric, he's a good fighter. Eric Schmalzbauer in white, and Rory Zimmer in the red trunks. Eric, Eric going right over the top with that um, right hand. And I have to admit, I'm a little prejudiced here because Rory's my neighbor. Is that right? Real All great right. kid. First year of fighting last year. So, so did um, he have a neighbor for a coach there, Pat? Or I'm sorry, Jim. Did he have a neighbor for a coach there? No, his father does some coaching, but he really, uh, really thinks that Dom is uh, a great coach. Trains all year. Loves boxing. He has a younger brother who's coming up next year, and uh, asked him today if he was going to box. He said, "Oh yeah." He has movement in the shoulders. Uh... These two are putting a jab into their uh, punching routine. You could tell they're more skilled uh, with the two and three year experience. Good right by Eric there. Nice moves by Rory. Both fighters, good fighters. Two good boxers, wouldn't you say, Jim? Oh, yeah. Quick hands, both guys. Winding down around one. Jim, that's, this one's going to be a tough one to judge. This is going to be a tough one. I like Zimmer in that round, though. I thought he was uh, had nice footwork, and I thought he was, um, you know, popping that jab nice. Very close round, though.